How you doing, man? I'm pretty good. about yourself, man? Man, I'm tired, bro. <laughs> <laughs> long, I'm tired. Week. Well, I'm about to say long week, but I guess it just started, so no, my, long weekend? My, no, man. Not even, my, my week starts on Tuesday, so Tuesday, Saturday, I'm working. Oh, okay, okay. So I got, you know, and then uh, Sunday I had to work extra, so it was just crazy, man. Today's my only day off on Monday. That's it. Mm-hmm. So and you still and technically you're still working. Absolutely. Got to. Gotta still grind, bro. No don't days stop. off, baby. Nope. No days off. Don't stop, man. You gotta grind, man. You gotta keep on grind. I, I don't like the word hustle. Hustle's temporary. You know what I'm saying? And and yeah. hustling is just not a good word to use no more. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a temporary word. I grew up in Brooklyn in the projects and Best Eye and hustled a long time. And hustling just wasn't a long term journey, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Hustling yeah. was always a side gig type of thing. You know what I'm saying? Not just on my grind, I make sure I don't stay in my lane either. Because I hate that I hate that term too, stay in your lane. Why should I stay in my lane? If there's traffic in it. I need to be I need to move to the next lane. I need to go to the next exit. I need to take the streets. You know, I, I can't stay stuck in, in in some lane that somebody doesn't want me to see what else is out there. You know what I'm saying? So we put we do that to ourselves though. The culture true. puts us we, we come up with these terms as a culture. And we glorify them, but I ain't really thinking about them. You know what I'm saying? We're just putting ourselves back in the box. You know what I'm saying? That's true. So it's just um, we just got to keep moving, bro, like, and don't stay put. Like, you know, erase all the lanes. I want no lines. This is my path, and however, which way I'm going to change and go to it, that's the way I'm going to go. That's the direction I'm going to go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're right. I agree. You got to. Gotta find your lane, man. When you find your lane, you know you can do big things. Yeah. The hard part is people just don't know what lane they. Well, that's the thing. I think that people need to really like. People don't take the time out to get to know themselves, though. They've been told from parents, "Yo, go find that thirty-year gig, go retire after thirty years, just get a good, decent job, pay the bills for the family." We're never taught how to explore, how to discover. We're never taught to you know to be our creative selves, to our best selves. We're never taught that. Yeah, it's very rare because it's hard to teach. A lot of our parents, you know, never learned that. So it's hard to teach us something that they don't know. Yeah, exactly. And you can't fault them for it because that's what they know, right? But at some time, you have to look at the instruction manual and say, this don't sound right. This look like it's in French. <laughs> it, it, don't, it don't fit me. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know what I'm saying? And And... I think the new generation is really going to come up, though. And they, 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 the new generation had the most passports compared to the last generation. You know what I'm saying? So that means they're traveling more. They're more exposed. Yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's a lot, That's man. It's true. So, but. Yeah, it's changing. I'll tell you that much. It's really changing. So I know you used to play football, right? Yeah, man. How was that? Well, um. I loved it, man. I mean, you know, I played all through high school, college, um, got picked up, you know, got not picked up, but, you know, I was supposed to get picked up by the Jacks, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, and like, you know, they used to call me all the time. Well, actually my agent. And, um, you know, I ended up didn't get drafted because they were supposed to draft me, but they didn't do it. And um, like probably about three or four days after the draft, the um, Buffalo Bills called me and, um, you know, I flew up to Buffalo, man, and went to a rookie mini camp. And um, I did real good, man. I did real good. And then, you know, after that, I didn't make the team. And um, I started pursuing indoor football. Okay. And um, after that, um, I, like, I was there for a good little while. And then, like, before the first game, because we was going all through, like, training camp and stuff like that. But, it, see, in Buffalo, I was at a rookie mini camp. And, um... You know, I used to tell everybody, like, my family members, like, me and the coach, like, it was big because me and the coach, after every practice, he would, like, race me, like, 30 meters, like, every practice, like, after every practice. So I'm like, man, I, I'm about to make it. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to make it. Right. Like, I'm calling my grandma, like, hey, this it, mo, this it. We in there, baby. We in there. And, like, I end up getting cut, you know. Um, but um, I started playing uh, uh, indoor football and, like a week before the game, man, uh, I went up for a pass, and um, the people, they tried to push me over the wall. And then I came down, like, awkward, and my bone, like, went straight through my leg. 
Oof. And uh, on my tibia and my fibula, I broke them both in half. And like, you know, that was like my first, you know, like sign of like depression. Like, cause immediately I felt like it's over. You know what I'm saying? I was like, right. you know, pretty much my life over. Cause that's all I work for. You know, I put all my blood, sweat and tears in that. You know how you say, you don't like to say hustle, but I grind for football all my life, football and track all my life, all my life. That's all I knew. That kept me out of a bunch of clubs. That kept me, you know, turned down a lot of girls, you know, because I had a goal to get my grandma out of the, you know, out of the streets, out of the ghetto. I wouldn't say streets, but out of the ghetto. Because my mom, you know, she pretty much was on drugs all my life. And my dad, he had got killed at a young age, you know. You know, me and him was real close. So, like, he didn't even see me graduate high school. Uh, you know, um, he wanted me to go to the Florida Gators, in which I was going to go there. But um, after he died, he got he got shot and killed. Um, shot in the head or whatever. And after he died, um, I, um, I kind of had this a, a mentor. There's a guy um, by the name of Willie Parker, and um, you know he took me in his home. And um, like like right before my dad died, you know I knew Coach Parker, but we weren't that close. But when my dad died, like that's when we really got close. And um, you know he kicked me off the team every year in high school. Coach Parker he kicked me off every year, and um. I used to didn't think he liked me, but um, I realized that, you know, you got to go through some things before you realize who you really are and who right. really care about you. So um, anyways, he, um, you know, he got me the nationals in track, you know, got me nationally ranked. So anyways, um, I went on this visit to, you know, Liberty University and, you know, I didn't want to go there. It was a Christian school. I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> right. I'm raising a Christian home. Why do I need to go to a Christian school? <laughs> So um, I went there, man, and it was a beautiful campus. And, uh, and I note that Florida, they was talking to me a lot, Florida and um, NC State. And, like, I kind of, like, I didn't know how to repay my coach because, you know, after my dad died, you know, he was, like, all I had. And I didn't know how to repay him because he, he helped me out a lot, tremendously. Right. Like, you know, people didn't even think I was going to graduate high school, let alone go to college, you know. So um, I thought the best way I could repay him is go to the school that, he, that I thought he wanted me to go to. And the coach that was there actually coached him when he was in college. So it was a done deal for me. I signed the papers, you know, on the um, visitation. And then um, I let Florida know I, I can't go there. Um, and I hated it. <laughs> I hated it every bit of it. Like, you know, but um, I felt like that was the only way I could repay him. And in reality, I think it was like was a dumb decision because – you know, your future depends upon what you like, you know, not what right. nobody else thinks. But at the time, you know, being real, real young, like, you know, he was like a father figure. So I was like, man, I'm going to just go ahead and, you, you know, him go here because I know he wants me to go here. So I went there and, you know, I did well, you know, did well, got there. Uh, I was a big time hitter. Uh, I was fast. First game in college, man. I was a gunner and I ran down and I like, I thought the dude caught the ball and I like did a legal tackle and it knocked his helmet off. And I was jumping up and down like, yeah, I'm that dude. Like, yeah, I got you, bro. You know, and I end up, the referee said 25 ejected. And like, I was like, man, you can't eject me. I'm all the way in Virginia. My family don't drove up here from Florida. Like, come on, man. You can't kick me out my first college game. And like, after that, man, it was just like, I was like, man, I know I'm supposed to be here. I ain't going to say God was sending me a sign, but I, I felt like it. You know what I mean? But, um, you know, after that, you know, I, I did well in track and football. And uh, I ended up, was about to go to, um, uh, I was going to go to, um, what was I going to go to, uh, I was a Bulldogs. I was going to go to Atlanta and go to Georgia. But um, I ended up going to FIU. They gave me a full ride. Um, I ran track there, played football. And, uh, you know, I kind of got in, uh, you know, I wouldn't say a lot of trouble, but, you know, I kind of did, like, and, um, you know, the last two years, I kind of, like, brought it all together. And um, I ended up getting in an argument with my coach. And, like, he took me off the starting lineup and put me on the scout team. And, like, so I was just you, like, man. What made you get, get it caught up like that? Like, what was your mindset at that time? You were getting a little bit of trouble. What was going on? Um... My mindset was pretty much, man, 
I'm in college. I'm free. I do whatever I want to do. I'm a grown man. You know, I ain't got to pay for nothing. I got a full ride. You know, I'm finna enjoy every bit of it. You know, uh, and like, now coming from, you got to think, I was coming from a Christian school to a school in Miami, Florida International University. So I'm coming from like, you know, kind of being like, you know, in the home, in the house, you know, closed in to free world. You know what I mean? So, and like I said, I was raised in the church, you know, so pretty much I was raised by my grandma. Cause like I said, my mom, she been on drugs all my life. And my dad, you know, he got killed, you know, uh, when I was in high school, but, um, it took, it took, um, you know, getting, you know, handcuffed, um, sitting, I've never been to jail, but I got, I got handcuffed and I got put in a holding cell and I was in a holding cell probably about 10 minutes and it felt like about 10 years. I bet. And like after the, every two minutes, I was like, sir, could you please let me out? I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I, I won't do it again. I started, you know, pleading my case. I'm a college athlete. I'm trying to do better. You know, I'm trying to better my life. And, you know, he told me I had to go to the bathroom. I told him I had to go to the bathroom. And he was like, um, you need to use the bathroom in there. I was like, no, I can't use the bathroom right there. I can't <laughs> use that, bro. You know, uh, and, like, that opened my eyes, that experience. And, like, it completely changed it, man. I, and I really got on my grind there. And, you know, I did well. And I got picked on, like I said, uh, after the season. I ended up getting um, able to go to the Buffalo Bills. Um I did. I, I was pretty fast because um, I ran like a four two nine in a forty at a uh, combine in um, Georgia, and um, I I ran four three in a four four at my home, um, and then you know um, I started doing it like, and when I got into music, man, it was pretty much the pain that I've been through, man, and that's what got me to telling my story, because like when I lost my mom, I mean when I lost my dad, it felt like I lost both parents because both parents. Because my mom, she was never there for me. And I love my mom, don't get me wrong, because you only got right. one mom, you know. But it's almost like she wasn't there at all. You know, if it weren't for my grandma, I probably would have been in, like, foster care or, you know, who knows, on the street somewhere. Right, man. So you come up with, with Top Notch 772, right? And yes, sir. Obviously, you heard, you heard yourself in playing ball. What happened after that? After, after you hurt yourself, is your your career is over? Um, in my mind, yeah, it was I was done. Um, I ended in depression. Um, after I broke my leg, I was on crutches for about nine months. Um, all I used to do was sit in the bed, play the video game, read my Bible. Sit in the bed, play the video game, read my Bible. Um, so you never lost your like faith. I was in. Go ahead. So you never lost your faith? Oh no, no, no! But one thing I did, I did say, is I asked, I some I shouldn't say. I said, God, why? You know, I asked him, why me? You know, why do I have to go through this? You know, I worked so hard, um, trying to make it somewhere, and I was so good at it. And you know, pretty much what I kept hearing in my spirit was, you know, you put football before me, so I had to take it from me. And um, you know, I, like I said, man, I, I was depressed, man, like. And I ain't ashamed to say it because I, I didn't know where I was going to go. But anyways, I started, you know, making music. And I was like, man, you know, in high school, I had wrote a poem. And uh, I'm a poet. And I wrote a poem. And it got published in some book. But I, I really ain't, I wasn't focused on that because I was just like, hey, whatever. You know, I'm all for football. That's all I was about, football and track, football and track. Like, right. no girls ever got in my way. You know, no drugs. You know, nothing. Nothing not even, honestly, not even God was in my way. I mean, I was in church, but I wasn't like, I didn't have a close relationship with God like that. I just knew of God. I didn't have a relationship with God. You know, not that I, you know, didn't think he was real because I knew God was real because it was what I was raised up in. But, you know, um, you know, after that, that he was taken, uh, football was taken and my dad was taken away. You know, all I had was God, man. All I had to do, could do is lean on his word. And, and, you know, I started getting closer to him. And, but it still was tough, man. It didn't get easier. It got harder. It got harder and harder, you know. And I was wondering, like, man, like, why am I trusting in someone or something that I can't see? And I'm, I'm doing worse than I was before. And you know, just I just continue to just pray, Lord, whatever's in your will, just let it be done. Like, you know, I'm sorry. Forgive me for all the wrong I've done. And I was in that type of uh, 
you know, in that realm right then. And so, you know, I started doing music, man. And, you know, um, out of pain, I started writing really good stuff. And like, you know, I was like, man, you know what? I'm gonna just going to put this to a beat. Um, and um, at first, my name was Christ-like. I went by Christ-like. Um, and I was like, man, that's too, that's too like, you know, everybody has that, you know. So I, <laughs> right. I thought about, you know, I was like, you know, God, give me something like different, you know. And then I thought about top notch, you know, and um, and it just stuck with me, man. And like before I got saved, I opened up for a uh, trick daddy up in the club, up in Coco. Um, you know, I, I I was on the scene like taking off my shirt, you know, the girls rubbing on my chest. I'm talking about the whole nine. You You're know, doing I was doing it. it all, you know. Um, I, but I, huh? So you was doing it. Oh yeah, I was doing it big, you know. Um, and um, but but um, and I had the guy that I was dealing with, the DJ. He was, you know, he was like, you know, I got some connection with Slip and Slide, so I might be able to get you in. So, but I was like, man, this ain't me. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel like I'm in my lane. I feel like I'm, you know, in somebody else's lane. But don't get me wrong, it was fun, you know. But um, anyways, I um, I started doing gospel. Because at first I didn't believe in no gospel rap. I was like, what is gospel rap? Like, what is that? You know, then I started, you know, looking up different people like Lecrae, you know. It's, it's um, big, dude. It's really big. Yeah. It's my nephew, very big. You know my, what my, I mean? my nephew's a Christian DJ. You see what I'm saying? So, it, and I was like, man, like, I can share my faith and like rap about how I feel at the same time. You know what I mean? And so um, I had end up getting a gig. Oh, um, Flo Rider, he had hosted an event up in Fort Lauderdale, and um, uh, Dietrich Haddon was there, um, Yolanda Adams was there, Fred Hammond was there, um, Jessica Reedy was there, um, who else was there? And Ty Tribbett, he was there. So I kind of opened up for all of them at one event. Um, and, um, I, and, and I just, from then on, man, uh, and also I did it you know, open up for at a fashion show um, for Ernest Pugh. Okay. Um, so, man, I, I got I got some pretty good back, like, you know, background. Like I said, I think it's just God showing me that when I was at my lowest point, when I was in depression, that he can show me that I can have greater than what I thought I could have. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a fantastic story, man. That's an amazing story. So, you know, you come up with Top Notch, right? Obviously, you're a Florida native. I live in Atlanta right now, so you know you come. In, if you would have been a bulldog, okay. I would have been a fan of yours. <laughs> um, and then you went to the Bills. I'm a Giants fan, so the Bills is Canada to me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so when you started writing, and you really started figuring out, hey, you know what? I want to be a Christian rapper, right? Or you want to just have these lyrics that you know that's going to really give you to your points. You, you said your your passion. You really found who you are. What was that? What was that switch like? Like, what was that? Like that kind of aha moment. You spoke about it just now. Like, you know, you're saying that you know you felt like it wasn't you, but you need to do something else, and you found out that hey, you no, know I can jump into this kind of gospel Christian uh, category. It's a totally different category. Even and so honestly, and some Christians just still don't like it, right? That some Christians don't like. Yeah. The older yeah. Christians don't like the Christian hip hop. You know, um, but not all of them. You no, know, so a lot of people, the younger generation does like it a lot. How do you kind of cipher out, or how do you kind of not switch people over, but explain to them that you know it's really it's not gangster, it's, it's Christian. You know, it's not you know you're not glorifying objects. You know, you're talking about the word of God, but you still have these yeah. older generation feels like, hey, it's kind of blasphemous for you to even talk about that way or have that type of music style. To, to me, um, at first I was angry. I was like scared. I was like, I don't know, you know, if these people going to receive me, um, you know, but in the Bible talk about, you know, you can't be afraid of the people's faces, you know what I mean? And what they think. And like, I was like, man, um, th the difference is to me is that, you know, number one, I don't see myself as a gospel rapper. I'm a rapper that's saved. You know, I'm a rapper that has a relationship with God. And I think where people in the church, I say church folks because, you know, it, it is real Christians, but church folk, the problem with it, what it is, is they don't realize that 
people that, you know, so-called as called gospel rappers, they've been through things just like, you know, secular rappers. Mm -hmm. so, so all we're doing is sharing our story without cussing, without, you know, talking about guns, you know, without, you know, talking down on women. That, to me, that's art. You know what I mean? That's the Bible, you, you isn't can, it? You know, I was talking to a kid. Exactly. You know what I mean? So we all been through things. We just, you know, as a as a gospel artist, it's just you can express yourself without downgrading people. And that's what I love about it. I can tell you how I feel or what I've been through without making you feel bad. I'm like an inspiration. So if you're going through something, you know, um, you can see what I've been through and you can use my testimony to help you get through what you're going through. And to me, that's that's bigger than bigger than music. Because now your life changing. You're changing somebody's life now. No, you're absolutely right. And and I think that's the biggest thing is, you know, I, I think you have people who already believe in the faith. And then you have people who are just religious. Right? And people fall yes. into the religion aspect of things, which the religion part is made by man. Right? But as far as the yes. faith, the faith is totally different. And I think that's, and that's with any group. You know what I'm saying? It's like, especially with Christians, you have so many denominations with Christians, right? And and people are always going to try to compare one denomination to another. And some people have so-called more faith than another, or they tend to put themselves higher depending on what prestige they are in inside the church itself. But that means nothing at all, as long as you have your faith to yourself and you know that what you're doing is the right thing you're doing. You know, you don't necessarily need to go to a building to praise, right? But people feel like they do because you know yeah. they want to be around people that's like them as well, and that's a great thing as, as well. Yeah. And yes, when I listen to your, your music, it was dope. Your flow was crazy, you know what I'm saying? And you, you know it's Thanks. you you have the language too that you can tell, like you know what I'm saying? Like you're you're gonna go deep with it. Your 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 vocabulary is deep, which I love it. You know, it says that's not it's not basic. It's not like you know you know uh, hat cat. You know, rat trap. <laughs> you know, it's yeah, it's, yeah, beyond, yeah. it's it's beyond that. It's not it's not that simple stuff. You know what I'm saying? And um, when you decided to do this and you, you released your first your first um single, how did that make you feel recording that? Like, what was the process with that? We started recording that single. <laughs> oh wow! Um, my first song that I did as a gospel artist, um, it was called. He he lives, he lives in me, um, and um, I just I felt I felt kind of ain't gonna lie I felt kind of weird because it was like, hold on wait a minute, like I'm I'm talking about a dude, like first and foremost I was like you know my whole thing was like hold on wait, I don't understand you know you know what people are talking about when they talk about you know God lives in them. And, you know, before I wrote that, you know what I mean? But when I started to get into the word and I started to, you know, fast and pray, um, I started realizing, you know, that God really does live on the inside of you. And all, all he wants you to do is use what's in you to express to the world. You know, um, so when I recorded the song, man, I, I was I was ecstatic. I was happy, man. I was like I was telling everybody, man, hey, hey, man, you need to go check this out, man. This thing is hot. You know, and, you know, a lot of people really loved it, you know, but a lot of people didn't like it. It was like, oh, you know, how are you going to rap about the Bible? You know, you know, but that motivated me because one thing about me, I always been a person that go against the grain. Like, you know, I've never been a follower. I've been a leader all my life and I always come out against the grain. And, um, you know, and that just pushed me to to make more music and more music after that. But my first song I believe, you know, that's what sparked it and showed me that, you know, wow, I can be, you know, dynamic in a different way. Or, you know, um, right. this it felt good to be able to share my story without talking about, you know, this girl or, you know, that, you know, trap house or, you know, and don't get me wrong. I don't I don't downgrade anybody. But at, for me, it felt good because I was able to really express it was like I was testifying in church, you know, <laughs> but I was doing it to a beat. It just right. felt good. No, that's dope. I, I, it sounds like you're having fun with it. it, it you believe what you're saying. And, you know, when other people either rap or they sing, you can tell that someone wrote it for them or their heart is it in it. And when you when you rap, bro, like, you, you, I feel it from you. 
It's like with Mary J. Blige sings. You know Mary J. Blige, she, she pretty much crying inside every song, man. Like you feel it. You know what I'm saying? Um, and you have you have that same type of persona, bro. Like, you know, you listen to your songs, it's like, man, like, you really feel something. Like, you really speak it. What's, what's next for you? What's, what, what, what's the game plan for going forward? Um, just my goal is I kind of want to – I want to get on the billboard charts. You know, I want to do something that people don't think is possible to get done. I mean, I know a couple people, you know, did it. But I live in a small town. Um and, you know, it's harder for a gospel artist to get, you know, to get accepted by the world, you know, and that's those who I'm going after. I'm not going after the people in the church. I'm just letting you know that right now, right. you know, because that's what God said. You know, he didn't come here to heal the people who aren't sick. He came here for the sick. I'm not trying to help the people who know God. I want to go at the people who don't know him and I want to let them know that you can still be yourself, bro. You can still be who you are. You know, you can still do what you like to do, but you guys. When the closer you get to God, the more your life changes. That's pretty much how it is. You know, right. you're not gonna change overnight. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. You know what I mean? So, um, I, I just that's my goal to get on Billboard charts. And when I get on there, um, you know, because I, I used to tell people, you know, I, I would I would use Tim Tebow. I said Tim Tebow is in a great position. And when you and when you have that type of you know following, you know, more people listen to what you say. And if we can get more Christians to have the following that like Jay-Z has or, you yeah. know, has the following that Lil Wayne has, don't you know we could change this world? You know, but the thing is, it's so tough to break that because, you know, the secular world, they only like to hear secular things. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, 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 it's real tough with that. You know what I mean? But that's that's the hard part about being a Christian artist. You know, but at the end of the day, I can go to a show. I don't care if it's one person or 10,000 people. If, if I can reach one person, I've accomplished my goal. No, absolutely. I don't care about the fame. No, no, that, that, I think that's where, that's what you have to do, though. The fame doesn't bring anything else to you, right? You know, it just brings you, you know, attention, right? Celebrity. Exactly. That's what the fame does. You know, and when my, uh, shout out to my nephew, DJ Michael. Like I said, he's a Christian DJ, and he's touring He's touring the country, and he, he's he's doing venues. You know what I'm saying? And that wasn't expected, because he said he wanted to be a Christian DJ, and we, everyone scratched their head. and was like, "You want to be a what?" Didn't know that existed. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you're right. But most things people don't know it exists. As long as you find your niche and you know there's an audience out there for it, go for it. Why not? Make it happen, right? That's true. That's true. And for you finding your niche, yeah. you know, you're doing your thing. It's like, man, like, it has to feel good. So as, as you continue to move on, and like I said, like, you know, the go hit billboards, what are you doing now? What are the steps you're taking to get there? Like, you know, how, how much time you spend in, in recording? How much time you spend writing? Like, give people kind of a breakdown of what, what your, like, your schedule looks like, what your agenda looks like. Um, Pretty much, <clears throat> like, music is always on my mind, man. I'm always promoting my stuff, you know, trying to find ways to network, Um, you know, one th- you know, before I, you know, really say how I do it, I learned three things about music. You got to you gotta have money, you got to be patient, and you got to be persistent. Yes. You know, it's not all about money, but, and you know, even with anything, when you do music, you know, you go do a, a venue or, you know, you go do a show. You're not there for the money, but, you know, you need money for your gas, you know, you need yeah. money, you know, to record more songs, you know, so that's what it's really about. You just... Actually, I wouldn't even say, you know, giving money, blessing. I say you just sowing a seed in the good ground. You know what I mean? Right. So, um, you know, and um, with me, man, I wake up in the morning. I usually always have something on my mind with music. So, like, if I, I it could be two o'clock in the morning, and if I hear like a line or something, you know, I'll wake up and like write it down. <laughs> you know, um, or either if I got some type of melody in my in my mind, I record it right then and there because. I, I realize that sometimes you have something and if you don't write it down, because the Bible says write it down and make it plain. If you don't write it down right then and there, you're going to lose, you know, the rhythm or the real me- the real melody that you had before. So every day I'm trying to create new things, man. Um, and I try to at least go to the studio at least, you know, twice, every, like once every two weeks or sometimes I go twice in a week. Um and I'm just trying to create new things, man. I'm always, you know, looking for good beats. 
and you know people talk about oh those are secular beats um well you what's can, a secular see, that's beat, what one thing a beat's a beat that's that's what i'm saying like <laughs> you know i'm making it new like you know I'm, I'm doing something new with it i don't like i did a remix to a tupac beat and it's called changes and um like it could have been originally for tupac but i felt like you know you know, because some people say, hey, you rap you rap like Tupac. So I just wanted to see how it sounded, you know, with me rapping on it. And, I, and it sounded real good. It came out. And the key the key to it was people know that familiar sound. So right. when they hear that beat, they're going to listen to the words. Oh, okay, let me hear what he's saying. You know, um, and sometimes dude, that that's the best way. And I'm not trying to, you know, trick people. But, you know, sometimes that's the best way to get people. You give them a familiar sound, but you're speaking something different. That that sometimes that draws them in, you know what I mean? Because people aren't, you know, people aren't really knocking down church doors to try to go be saved, man. You no, know they're what I mean? not. No. You gotta like. So I mean, that's that's where a lot of people are losing that, and you know, people, you know, even talk about you know rapping in the club and stuff like that. Would I ever rap in a club like a secular club? I would because I'm not there to, you know, I don't have a, you know, a weakness to, you know chasing out the girls. I don't have a weakness to drinking. I don't have a weakness to smoking. What I'm trying to do is go win somebody's soul. You know, if I can come in with a banger, you know, banging, and you can listen and you understand what I'm saying, and it gets in your spirit, <laughs> I'm walking out. You're going to try to find me, or you're going to do something like, hey, where's that guy? You know, what was he talking about? You know, that's my goal. I want to punch him in the mouth and just walk out. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Punch him in the mouth and walk out. I don't no, really want to socialize. Right. You know, I mean, I want to go in there and show you what God has did for me and, 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 and speak the gospel through, you know, rap. But a lot of people, they're, oh, no, you're wrong. You can't go in there. But how do you reach the people unless you go to where they are? That's my question. No, you're absolutely right about that thing. At the same time, so listen, it's, it's a business. Like you said, you got to pay the bills. If someone's going to pay you to do a gig, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? And if, people, if your audience is there already anywhere, whether it's in a secular club or not, um, doesn't matter where your audience is at, because you're, you're gonna be hitting so many different type of people, and I, and I think that's that's a that's a confusion part too when you have Christians in themselves saying those types of things, and then you're saying, well, what is the Bible saying then? Because you know that means you, you're just trying to stay true to whoever wants to be in in our group, and that's it. Yeah. And yeah. it's not about you trying to convert nobody. That's not what you're trying to do. Yeah. But you're saying, hey, if my spoken word it touches that person and it, it sparks them. That's me. That, that's that's that person was contemplating suicide or depression, right? And and your exactly. lyrics brings them up. Exactly. You just help them out, bro. You just saved them. You know, so exactly. how can that be a bad thing to be in a secular situation when that maybe that secular person, maybe that person is still a Christian at the same time, needed that right place, right time. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's a category that listen, you can't like. Just like in, like in hip hop now, there's mad different categories of hip hop. But back in the day, especially in my golden era, like in the 90s, it was just one particular rap and that's it. Now you have different types of rap styles, right? You got these kids coming up with different ways of rapping between trap to to kind of like, you know, the, the auto the auto tunes type of rapping and everyone's the mumble rappers. There's an audience for all that. It's just there's no difference in rock and roll. There was one part of rock and roll, and then it started getting alternative, then punk, then grunge. It started ciphering off to different things. And hip hop yeah, yeah. is going through that. Hip hop is going through that right now. Hip hop is is, is morphing into something bigger. It's the probably the, the the most known piece of music around the world. Hip hop. You know what I'm saying? The culture itself has penetrated entertainment, everyday entertainment. And why wouldn't it penetrate the Christian market at that point? You know what I'm saying? And I think people have to be responsible, you know, responsive to that and understand, hey, no, you guys aren't bringing gangster shit to a church. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Even though you may have a beat that sounds yeah. similar to something, doesn't mean that's what you're rapping about. And for them to be that ignorant, that's what's scary about it. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's, and to be honest with you, that's what we're losing that as in the church. You know, people, they're so caught up on the four wall your ministry. Right. It's all about the four wall ministry. It's about we're only going to reach the people that's on the inside. But if you really like research, God, like, you know, he barely, Jesus barely did anything in the synagogue. 
Mm-hmm. He went where the people were. He went with the tax collectors. You know, he went to find the fishers. You know, I mean, how do you reach the people if you don't go and find them? And just like when the Bible says, you know, if you got 100 sheep and you lose one, like, are you going to leave the 99 and get the one? Or are you going to stay with the 99? Like, you're going to go get that soul. You know what I mean? And I'm not trying to, I don't try, I don't go and try to like preach to people, but I'm going to tell you what I've been through and how I overcame it. And I guarantee you it's going to help you. And, and, and since music is so big, if I can use my testimony in music and I can get you not into that, because a lot of music has, you know, it takes you to a place that you didn't ask to be, you know what I mean? Right. So like, if I can share with you how I, how, how I made it through my shortcomings, you know, how I made it through all my hard times and I'm not going to downgrade you to me, that's music. You know what I mean? I mean, but people in the church, they don't, and I'm not going to say everybody because it's real people, it's real, you know, believers, you know what I mean? But church folk, you know, they always, you know, point fingers. And like, I talk to a lot of people who are not in the church and this is why they don't come to church because they're always being judged. Right, it's yeah. always about, you know, you know what they're wearing or, you know, how they talk. And, you know, like I used to tell people, like, how do you know if this is not the last outfit they have for the day or they, you know, you don't know what a person is going through. You know, you just see the outside. But, you know, like I said, I'm, it's very hypocritical you know, I'm not perfectly nowhere near it. I don't build Exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, to me, that doesn't change who I am. You know, I, I'm different. I'm unique. I'm going to continue to do me, you know, because this guy put me on this earth, you know, for a purpose. You know, and I'm gonna fulfill that purpose, and I believe is to reach the young people. You know, um, so that's 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 what I'm my, I'm passionate about now is reaching the youth, man. No, that's that's huge. I think that's what the youth need. They need to see men, especially black and brown men, in prominent positions, that's able to give them some type of good influence. You know what I'm saying? And that's not happening enough in the culture. You know, and that's what I, that's why I have this podcast here for, because that's why I call it Giant Nova Presents. I'm presenting every person I'm speaking to their story. It's the platform for the people. You know what I'm saying? And I have so many people. Even now, like I have black young women scientists coming on in the next couple of weeks. You know what I'm saying? How many times you can say you've seen that somewhere that you see a, a, a black woman as a scientist speaking? You know what I'm saying? And a challenging freaking black woman talking on something about science that's hidden they they don't want to show that type of stuff you know what i'm saying and we can't continue having that Uh you know what i'm saying and that's why you know that this podcast is huge because i'm giving a voice to a lot of people who don't have a voice who don't have that megaphone so they can be heard you know what i'm saying and the biggest thing about that is is that people need to be heard need to be seen they need to understand how to get to the next person to follow them you know what i'm saying like to to your point you know with the the church this thing with this thing within the four walls we're in the future right now. And social media is is beyond four walls. You know what I'm saying? And you can blow yes. up. You, let's say you might not blow up here. You might want to blow up across the world. You might blow up in Australia. You might blow up in freaking Germany. You know, and that's fine too. They they, they have money too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that's and there's been, there's, been, there's been plenty of artists who've made it that's been underground for years, but they're super famous around the world. You know what I'm saying? That's fine. Because I'd rather, I'd honestly... I'd rather be able to do what I want to do, but not have the fame. I don't want the celebrity. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I, I, don't, I yeah. don't want that whole extra. I want to be able to still walk down the street, get my bread, get my milk. You know what I'm saying? And I'd be bothered type of thing. If it happens, I have to learn how to deal with it. And so would you. But at the end of the day, it's like, you know, you know what? I just want to go out and do what I want to do. And that's writing music, but writing Christian music. You won. You already found out what most people don't know what the hell they want to do. Hmm. That's huge, you know what I'm saying? So for you to come out, you know, being a Florida native, you know, having this 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 football career in your young, you know, when I mean, you were young, this young career, and then having the injury, the injury, the injury was was meant to be. The injury was was yeah. meant to lead uh, you to where you're at now. I I, I still I hate to say it, but am I, on, I, I? Let me reiterate that I don't hate to say it, but you know, I used to never want to like accept that. Like, because that's all I knew. But, I mean, it was no matter how good I was, and I was really good, man. No matter how good I was, it just wasn't meant for me to make it to the NFL. You know what I mean? Um, and, you know, so it, it was, this was my my lane. It's like running track. 
you know, so many years I was running sideways. I was running from lane one to lane six, you know, but when I, when I lost, you know, everything I thought that was for me, I started, I stayed in my lane and, you know, I just love making, I love making music that makes people feel good. Like that makes people, it encourages people because that's what I used. I had to encourage myself so many times, you know, I had to turn down, like I said, so many parties, you know, I got called like a lot of names. Oh, you square. Or, you know, <laughs> you, you think you're better than everybody else. But the problem was, is that in my family, like I was like one of the, I was actually the first one to make it, you know, that far, you know what I mean? Um, sure. You know, I might've had more that I don't remember, but you know, like in my, you know, cousins that I hung out with, you know, all my sisters and brothers, you know, I was the first one to make it that far. So it was like, that mean I had to go against the grain a lot of times, you know what I mean? And actually, I'm going to share this right here. This is kind of funny. Um, I used to go out with my, my family, right? And um, they would offer me like a drink, like, you know, give me like, you know, Hennessy, you know, Chase with, you know, some, you know, uh, orange juice or whatever. And I'll, I'm a clown, man, you know, so I joke around a lot. So what I used to do, I let them drink, 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 drink. And when I get the cup, I'll put it to my mouth and like, I'll just let it like touch the rim of my mouth and then I'll put it down. But I'll start acting like I'm drunk. Like, <laughs> boy, you know what I'm so <laughs> crazy, man. Yeah, cause, you know, I start doing that um, because I wasn't going to let nothing stop me from making it to the NFL. So, you know, you know, it, 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 uh, you know, they'll go walk away. I'll go dump it out and I'll put orange juice inside of it. And then when they come back, I'll down it. I'll like down it. <laughs> and then I'll, they'll be like, boy, you, you flipping cuts back. I'll be like, yeah, cuz I'm flipping <laughs> cuts back tonight. You know what I mean? And like, that's what I did to defeat peer pressure, man, because yeah. peer pressure is real. You know what I mean? So like, you know, to this day, my cousins, they still think that I really got drunk, but I've never been drunk a day in my life. Never. <laughs> but no way, but it's it's I messed up that you had to even do that from your fam. That they couldn't see true. that they couldn't see where you were trying to, to, to go and prosper and either and I tell people like family's no different. Like, you know, family is is you can't choose your family, but you have haters in your family. You got That's people true. who want to sabotage you. You got people who are jealous of you. You know what I'm saying? And and you know, they got people who think that you're just they think you're better than everybody else. You know what I'm saying? And because that just shows how much insecurity they have. They're just upset about the opportunity that you may have. That they can have the same thing too. They just has chosen not to. You know what I'm saying? That's the biggest thing. Opportunities out here for everybody. You just gotta grab at it. It's, it's hard work. As you know, playing football ain't no joke. It's hard work. It's true. You know what I'm saying? So for you go, you know, from doing track and also doing, you know, football to, you know, doing from going to the Bills, going to Jacksonville, doing to the Bills and doing arena football. Yo, your body's taking a pounding, bro. And then to try to stay in top shape, come on. Like it's it's ridiculous, man. Like you have to be a special person to do that. You know what I'm saying? Not everyone can do that. But when you hey, one thing I realized, man, when you love something, you're gonna do whatever it takes. Oh, it don't matter. And that's the yeah. same thing as being a Christian, man. If you really love God or you really, you know, want to change your life, whatever it takes, man, you're gonna sacrifice. You're gonna do it. And that's what, you know, really what Jesus did for us. He he did the ultimate sacrifice and that's dying for our sins, you know. And like I said, I don't I don't try to go around. Like I said, I'm not a person. You're not going to see me going around. Hey, you know, like, you know, John the Baptist, be saved. You know, you know I'm, I'm not going to do that because it's 2019. People are not going to receive that. Right. But I will spit a verse, you know, something like, you know, hey, Jesus died for you, bro. Um, You know what I'm saying? Like, come up with a line that I know that's going to fit them. And they're going to be like, man, you know what you said? And now that opened the door for me to tell them a little bit about Matthew or Mark, you know, uh, you know how David had to overcome his brothers. You know what I'm saying? So right. it's, it's, it's ways that you, you do things, you know, it's how you get, you know, you know, how you get, you know, people to, to come over or, you know, get people to listen. I right. keep going dark. No, you're hitting, you're hitting everything on my own point, bro. Like you really are. So when is when is your EP going to come out? When are you going to drop an EP? Man, um, me personally, man, it's just, I pretty much just do a lot of singles right now. I really, I mean, I got a lot of, you know, songs, a lot of tracks, but I kind of like get a single and I push it 
Um, I don't know. I couldn't tell you. But um, I'm always pushing out a bunch of, you know, singles. Um, and um, like the new song I got out, Ain't Nobody Mad. You know, um, I've been getting a whole lot of love on that, man. I mean. I, I like it a lot, bro. I gotta tell you. I, I like it a lot. You know, when you sent that to me, man, I was like, man, it's good stuff. <laughs> it's really good stuff. Like that's what I'm saying. Like you, you have this, you have this, this, this way with you, man, and you got to keep on, you have to keep on pushing on, keep on releasing. That's why I was asking about the EP because you need to have something that has a small body of work, real quick, so people can just digest all at one time. You know what I'm saying? Like because it's you're really good at what you do, bro. Appreciate you, man. I appreciate you. Um, but yeah, um, so I just, I kind of. I kind of don't even really have a schedule. Like when I go to the, you know, studio, I just, just go. When I feel something, I just go. Like right then and there. I, I try not to sit on it because, you know, when you, when you um, when you wait, sometimes I know when I wait, the way the feeling that I had, it kind of leaves a little bit. Yeah, no doubt. I think I think yeah. Whenever you feel as an artist, hey, that's that's being creative. That's being a you know creator. And you're going to only create when you feel like you have that stuff in you. That makes yeah. the absolute sense to me. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? That, that's, that's how most people should create. It's like, hey, when you feel something. like If you look at a lot of the new rappers, you know what I'm saying? They do release a lot of music. You know, if you look at the, the older heads, like I said, like a Jay-Z, for instance, he releases music every two, maybe two and a half years. You know what I'm saying? And that's a kind of an old school way to do things. Back in the day, that used to happen. That kind of be the thing. Like, you know, take two years off, go through life again, right? Experience some more stuff, and then you can put that to your next album. You know, and you need to have that break. If you just pump that song after song after song, you're not allowing yourself to live. You're not allowing yourself to feel. And it's not going to be as true to what you can really probably put out. So you you just going out there and, and actually going to the studio when you feel something inside of you. That's that's dope. That's that, that makes mo- the most sense to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. I, um, and I was telling somebody the other day, I was like, you know, if you keep on, you know, pumping out a lot of songs, you no, know, for me personally, like, you know, I'm, you know, this is the way I think. But if I keep pumping out a bunch of songs after songs after songs, I'm not really giving this song time to get into people's mind, to their heart, to their spirit, yeah. because I'm giving them too much food. So I want you to enjoy. Yeah. If I if I got you in front of you, I got steak, shrimp, lobster, you know, clams, you know, oysters, you know, you got too much to choose from. But if I can pump you with this 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 lobster, you know, and just have it right there for you, and you real hungry, you are gonna tear that lobster up, and you are gonna want some more of that lobster. Yeah. But if I keep giving you different, you know, foods, you are gonna want a little bit of that, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. You know what I mean? You got too many choices. And so, like I said, I'm all about punch them in the mouth and. and Waiting on them to ask for more. If I give them too much, they ain't got nothing to anticipate for. I love it, man. Just punch them in the mouth. That's gonna be the saying. <laughs> <laughs> you got you, bro. Like, so how did Top Notch come up? Like, well, how did you come up with the name? Complete, like, you know, like how did that, how did that name come about exactly? Um. Wow. Um. I think I just like. Realizing that, hey, um, you know what? What can I? What can I say? Or, you know, do to represent how I feel, and um, you know, with top notch, you know, it's it's got notches pretty much got like a dent, something that got a dent in it and stuff like that of that nature, um, you know. So I've been in a lot, you know. Um, one of the definitions it has a dent, you know, like it means like a dent. And like, um, you know, top is obviously, you know, up high. So even though I've been through a lot, I got a dent in my life, a dent in my heart, I'm still on top of everything that I do. So, you know, I put that together with top notch. I love it, man. I think we're going to end it with that, bro. That that sounds dope. I, people, if you haven't heard top notch's music, if, if, if you even had to be a Christian, you know, if you're just a lover of music, period. And good and good lyrical hip hop, you gotta check him out. I'm gonna put all his links in the description. You know what I'm saying? Gonna see that in the bio. Um, he's dope. Tom Nacho, thank you so much for coming on, brother. And thank you for for blessing us with your presence, bro. Like, you know, you're amazing, man. I wanna keep on, you know, following you and supporting you, bro. And 
man, thank you so, so much for coming on, bro. Hey, man, no problem, man. I appreciate the opportunity, man. Thank you for, you know, allowing me on your podcast. Um, and just say to all my fans, I love all y'all. You know, I didn't even say, um, you know, thank you, Jesus, for dying across for my sins. Um, and shout out to, uh, I love you, mama. You know, uh, I still love my mama. Um, and, um, you know, but just want to encourage people before I go, man. At the end of the day, we all... You know, I got this new song. It's called it's called Struggle, but I'm not releasing that yet. But just to let y'all know, we all gonna go through something, regardless of how tall you are, how short you short you are, the color of your skin, how much money you got. Everybody got to deal with something in their mind. So you know, the only way you're gonna overcome that is you know through that Bible, you know, building that relationship. You heard it here first, people. He said it. Giant Nomad presents Top Notch. All right, brother. Peace, man. All right, take it easy.